you've heard it a million times. Follow your passion and the money will come. Just follow your passion. Just do what you love. That is some of the worst advice you could ever get. I think that advice has so many people chasing after true fools go with little regard to outcome, time invested, based on this superficial whim defined as passion. I think it's one of the worst ways to go. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create passion not find passion but to create passion you don't want to be in a situation where you must wait for something to come to you you want to be in a situation where you can go out and get it and have it and hold it in the palm of your hand and then make it do what you want it to do hey this is Glennon Cameron founder of hustlers kung fu life skills .com, where you can learn how to fix your credit beat your child support case and start a business first link below get your free 19 business and life skill courses today who knows maybe by next weekend you could be rolling in the money the best way to help you out with this is to tell you my story because it's an illustration of everything that I just said plus more Look at, look at it as an instruction manual. I'm gonna take two things. I'm gonna take a passion. There is a passion I've had for decades. I love reading, I love writing, communication. This is something that has been evident in every decade of my life, which is five currently. So for five decades, I've been down with this. That's a sure sign that something's your passion. No matter what comes and goes in your life, you're with it. Doesn't matter what happened in the rest of the world, you're still doing your thing, or if you leave it, you come back to it. So first, that's how you identify what's a passion or not. Now, second thing is how to create a passion. I had a passion and I created a passion. Because the first passion, which I knew to be a passion, which I knew was real, which is I knew was worthy, which I knew it to be something I would be comfortable with doing the rest of my life. That was the communication thing. Now, this is the deal that I made with the universe July 17th. 3.30 p.m. 2009. If I can make $50,000 a year as a writer, I was all in. That was it. There was no fanfare, no trips, no big titty bimbos. It was just like, I could do this thing that I love and make enough money to sustain myself and not need the assistance of the government or anyone. I'm in. That was it. That was the deal. So, I gave myself two years to make it happen. Lived off savings. Now, what happened was, because I made that commitment, this is another part about finding and creating your passion. Commitment is a word that a lot of people don't like. Because I was committed to that, it forced me to develop a passion for video, which I really, really, really hated in the beginning. I had to force myself to make videos. I had to force myself to learn how to edit. I had to force myself to read up on video production, video edit. I had to force myself. Now, why did I force myself to do all of this stuff when it wasn't my passion? The first two months of video production, I hated it. The first six months, I tolerated it. I really, didn't, really, really didn't start to like this stuff until maybe three years ago, where I was like, oh, it's cool, let's make a video. Now, what happened? I'm gonna give you the, the tutorial, I'm gonna give you the illustration, I'm gonna give you the process. 
because I forced myself and I was committed to doing it whether I liked it or not whether I liked it or not because this is something that happened with clients it's like there's what they want to do and that's what they like okay often what you like will not get you paid my passion is in alignment with high income because as a writer you're a, you could be a copywriter money as a writer you can be an author which I am money as a writer you can be a script writer movies plays commercials money as a writer you can do so many things that are in alignment with money it is sick so my passion is in alignment with high income every passion is not that is why follow your passion and the money will come is bullshit it is 100 percent bullshit for most people and that's why so many folks are frustrated because they're following that whim and they wonder where the money is now let's go back to my passion which was writing communication and video which was now my passion which in the beginning I hated didn't like it why did video become a passion because I became good at it it's like when you're learning when you're trying to learn the language of dating and romance when you're a guy and you're you're not doing that well with women but one day you, you put in that key and the lock opens next thing you know all of the stuff that you didn't like to do you're doing it all the time you're just like every every regard you're just like hey watch this let me go over here and talk to this chick you didn't want to do it you were ashamed you were bashful but once you got your skill sets together each and every opportunity that you could show it off you did and you didn't like doing it you were like i said shy you got nervous around girls but once you learn the key to macking nobody can stop you from macking you even had a girl a good girl and you were still macking because you were so caught up in the euphoria of being the mac because it was such a huge spread between where you were and where you currently are you can mac in your sleep you're turning down pussy that you used to beg for because you can do better now with video and other passions if you apply that level of determination if you apply that level of care and studentship and discipline you treat it as a vocation and you become good then all of a sudden that thing that you hated that gave you headaches that you didn't like to do maybe you were colder you were trying to learn ruby rails and the shit was like blowing your mind then one day the code looked like your best friend and you was like coding in your sleep every time you turn around you were coding because now you own the code the code doesn't own you you own the code and now the code is your passion now with the video I started to get results I started to get fame I started to get recognition and uh, people getting props and the thing is I wasn't doing video for all of that stuff I was doing video because video was the only thing that I was able to do rather quickly that sold a lot of books very fast I didn't do video because I wanted it it was a byproduct of the thing that fed my passion to the point the byproduct is now the main thing in the former and the passion writing is secondary a third I still write but video is what I do all the time now and I originally hated it I hated it with a passion so find something that you're willing to suffer struggle and push through the pain to become good at because see this is the thing once you become good then you're going to want to become great because see good is going to be like when you went to the gym and you were benching like 135 now you're benching 315 you're like you know that 350 ain't that far away and at one point you were struggling with 135 but now you're like you know I can do this I can do this I can make this happen I can definitely do this now you, you're in the gym and you, you, you swole, you 
you're part of Swole Nation. You walk into any gym and everybody knows you lift. No one's going, do you lift, bro? No, because it's evident that you lift because of the way that you look, the way that you walk, the way that you throw those 45s on the bar. Everybody knows you lift. No one's asking you that. But two, three, four, five years ago, you were just some skinny punk ass kid. But now you swole because you suffered the pain of growth. That's what you got to do. I have a lot of people when they ask me, hey, Glendon, what should I sell? Glendon, what business should I start? They're not asking me that. They're asking me, what can I do and not fail? And that's the wrong motherfucking question. You need to be failing as hard and fast as you can because, see, this is in alignment with you struggling and building success because let's go back to the video thing. And this isn't about, wow, I'm all great. This is a fucking process that you can watch, you can emulate, you can duplicate and repeat if you can open your fucking minds to stop being a little whiny, scared little bitch anytime someone tells you that they're doing better than you and you instantly close your fucking mind. I said it like that because that's what many people do when they hear that someone's doing better. Oh, he must have been fortunate. He must have got lucky. Someone helped him out. Show must. All of that bitch talk. It's just bitch talk. Now, the process is work. Apply yourself. Struggle. Suffer. Go through pain. Go through agony. Yes, I'm telling you to suffer. Yes, I'm telling you to fail. Because the bigger you struggle, the more that you fail, the bigger the fucking reward. Little risk, little rewards. Big, big risk, big rewards. That's a immutable law of nature. It's not going to change. Now, find something and just, just say, you know what? I'm going to become good at this. I hate this shit. Uh, there was years ago, a guy on YouTube, I can't find it because I'm driving now, but he started dancing. No, it was a guy, and then there was this girl, little Asian girl. She taught herself how to dance in a year, and she filmed herself practicing, I think, every day. In the beginning, she sucked. About the, set, about the first month, she got a little better to the point now that she's recognized as an expert. And all she did was put herself out there, hold herself accountable for one year, and she created opportunities for herself. Do this, don't listen to me, Google it. Little Asian girl, um, I taught myself how to dance in a year. And you know, I think the first scene is she's like in front of a subway or something, uh, a subway car. She struggled, she struggled. It wasn't handed to her. She put herself out there. She made it happen. That's the thing that you have to do. Those are the pains and lumps you must take. Now, once you find this thing, that moment that you want to punk out, because uh, there was a moment I wanted to punk out on YouTube. I was making a lot of money. It was coming from Amazon. I was getting a lot of hate. I had all kinds of personal shit going on. Then, you know, video wasn't fun. Then I was like, you know what? I've been in a worse situation. I'm going to push myself to do better. And then it became fun again. I challenged myself. I got new rewards. New doors opened. New opportunities came. This is what happens when you put yourself in a position of discomfort versus the position of comfort, i.e. following your passion, doing what you like, no, and that whole thing about, you know, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life is bullshit. I love writing. I love making videos. But there's all kinds of thorns. There's all kinds of pitfalls. There's all kinds of bullshit that comes with this. But the love and the rewards and the gratification is so much bigger than the bullshit, I'm still vested. But make no mistake about it. No matter what you do, no matter what you build, there's going to be a certain level of bullshit. And what people are trying to do is escape bullshit and then wonder why they haven't grown. I have friends that I know, and they're still going to be friends because I got different classifications of friends. You can't go out to the old 
friend store and get yourself some new 20, 30, 40 year old friends. You can't do that. But I have friends who have not grown in 20 years. They're the same. And I'm not gonna say that's bad or good, but in today's world, it's very risky to go year by year and not grow as a person. Intellectually, professionally, financially, it's very, very risky to stay in that spot for a long time. Part of success is growth. Part of growth is pain. Many people are trying to escape pain, escape struggle, and escape hard work, which is doing something new and something that you don't like. It brings those things to the forefront. I'm struggling to learn this new platform. Uh, the first week was a bitch, and I was like, okay, this is what you do. Instead of you know going 20, 30 hours, I said, I'm only gonna do this an hour a day. Now, this is a mental trick that I play with myself that may help you. Uh, since I know I only have to deal with this an hour a day, it is not as arduous to go through it. But if I knew I was gonna have to sit there for 20 hours and just do this, I might just say, fuck it. So an hour a day, and then the second week, I learned a little bit more and I was like, okay, I got this, I got this. And then discomfort goes to confidence. This is how you find your passion. You don't, you, you create it. You don't find it, you create it, you make it. Steve Jobs, which everyone wants to quote, if you study his history, in the beginning, he was a loser. He was a pothead loser. He didn't want to do the stuff. He was somewhat of a little whiny little bitch. But he got good, he was bold with his predictions, and then his company and Apple became a passion after he started to be successful, not before he was successful. The passion came after proficiency. The passion came after competency. That's what gets you passion. Like fucking, let's go there. You begin, you fuck, it feels good. But when you really learn how to fuck, where you feel that orgasm from the top of your head, from your toes, and you in the bed like, oh, oh shit, did I just run a marathon? It's way different than when you started fucking. And then you'd be like, okay. You get to the point where you turn down women because you know it ain't gonna be that good. It's like, nah, she don't look like she can really work it like that. You become choosy because you become competent. You become proficient. So the average doesn't appeal to you. It bores you because you now at a different level. Totally different level. So if you want to be passionate about something, number one is commitment. Find something you can commit to for a year minimum. One year. Don't care how bad it gets, I don't care how fucked up it gets, for this one year, you're going to learn this skill, no matter what. Every month, you're all in. Number two, feedback loops. As you go through this year, you gotta put yourself out there. You gotta get feedback from people who don't like you, i.e. strangers. That's how you grow. One of the things, and I would say for anyone, the best way to build confidence is to create a YouTube channel or some social platform, put yourself out there and see how the public at large responds to your shit. You know, friends and family are great, but you know, unless you just have the amazing Rolodex, you're gonna run out of them sooner or later. It's just gonna make a lot of sense to learn how to deal with strangers. Learn how to put yourself out there. So you, you picked your skill, you made your commitment, you're getting feedback. The next thing is, when you hit that period where it is really boring, uh, dull, just, you know, you're just not getting those gains, you're not getting those gains like you were, you have to recommit yourself to the process. Change it up a little bit. You know, try a different version of it for a month or two. That still leads you to the same place where you want to be. That is how you become passionate about life. 
Now something else that's gonna happen. Let's go back to July 17th, 3.30 p.m., 2009. I committed myself to becoming a writer, which opened up the doors to many things because as you make this commitment and as you push on things, your exposure level exponentially spreads. And what I mean is your opportunity quoting just goes through the roof. You know, if you got a job and you go to the gym, you come home and you're only exposed to people in those loops, that's pretty much where all your opportunity is coming from. But by pushing on yourself and making yourself uncomfortable, you start to push into newer circles. You start to get feedback from different people. And then, I mean, the damnedest thing that happens, people just start doing stuff for you. They start giving you stuff. Folks be recommending you for jobs, recommending you for, you just get all kinds of things because you've demonstrated that you are capable of doing something. So the more that you struggle and the more that you put yourself out there, the more opportunity will come your way. And the more opportunities that come your way, the more that you will grow. It's a wonderful and beautiful cycle of growth. You struggle, opportunities come. You learn that opportunity, you expand your circle, you struggle, and you just keep going. Next thing you know, you know you're 90 years old and you're looking back and you see this life that is deep and wide. You, you're just like, you can't remember it all because it's so full. You can't remember it all because you've created all these experiences and you've touched all of these people and you put yourself out there. That is success, my friend. That is passion. That's how you get it, by giving and putting yourself out there. It's not going to come to you sitting at home just because you want it. I know everyone quotes the law of attraction. Well, I'm going to give you a new law that's more powerful than the law of attraction. The law of action. Look it up. It's more powerful. It's, 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 the law of action, properly deployed, will get you further in one month than the law of attraction will get you in a decade. I believe in that. It works. Law of attraction works. First thing is formatting your mind. But see, this is what happens when you employ the law of action. Action gives you feedback. Feedback gives you results. Results gives you confidence. So as you go out there and employ the law of action, then you are also creating a deeper and stronger belief system which fuels the law of attraction. That is your lesson for the day. If you're still here, this is what's gonna happen. And the link will be below. Everyone that signs up this week for Hustlers Kung Fu Dojo, which is, well, this level, I'll give it to you. Hustlers Kung Fu Dojo Income Sandbox. It's gonna be $69.99 per month. And what you're gonna get is an account manager. That's right. I'm in the process of hiring people. And this is gonna start April, this is it's gonna start May. So you sign up this week. And what you're going to do is get an accountability manager. A person that's going to call you up on the phone just like, hey, where are you struggling with this? You're going to get real help. But $69.99 and for the folks who sign up at the end of this video. Now, the people who signed up for $39.99, they're going to get the same deal. But that deal is over. And then once I announce this, this is going to be $99 bucks a month or maybe 150 or 200 I haven't decided but the thing is you're gonna get someone to help you be successful because most people have a problem with discipline and being accountable so we're gonna solve that but it ain't free so it's gonna be there and it's gonna say accountability exec deal once again it's gonna say accountability exec deal it's $69.99 it starts May 1st Okay? All right. So if you like this video, and you should, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment.